It's long been debated just what makes someone human. After all, neither modern science nor philosophy have been successful at defining what life is. Should we define humanity by having a body? Should we define it by having a soul or a ghost? Or should we define a human as someone who appears and passes as such? In case it weren't already obvious, today we're talking about the philosophy of Mamoru Oshii's 1995 masterpiece, Ghost in the Shell. If you haven't seen it, let me quickly catch you up to speed. The film tells the story of Major Matoko Kusanagi, a cyborg working for Public Security Section 9. Throughout the movie, we watch her struggle with her identity, with the story of a cyber terrorist called the Puppet Master unfolding in the foreground. At first, she's comfortable in the belief that she's human because she has human brain cells in her cyber brain. But over the course of the film, she hears many different opinions on what it means to be human. To illustrate the first of these opinions, let's go back to the time of World War II. A man by the name of Alan Turing created a test commonly known as the Turing Test. In this experiment, a human will converse with a computer program, and that program must convince the person that it's a human being. According to Turing, if that machine could accurately convince the human of its humanity, then that machine should also be considered human. This theory is similar to Bato's idea of humanity. Bato states several times over the course of the film that what makes the major human is the way she's treated. Like Turing, Bato believes that all you need to be human is to appear so, regardless of whether you're made of metal or organic materials. And Bato's view is one of the few that remain constant throughout the story. He considers the major to be just as human in the end as he thought in the beginning, even after she's merged with the puppet master. I've always been curious as to why Bato thought this way. After all, he and the major went through similar cyberization processes, so why are their views on humanity so different? Anyway, this opinion carries into the series too. In standalone complex, Bato is one of the few characters to treat the Tachikomas as individuals, as opposed to interchangeable units. He treats them as human, so in his eyes, that in turn, makes them human. Now that we've talked about Bato's views, let's move on to the Puppet Masters. The Puppet Master is quite a curious character in the film, specifically because he's the embodiment of the Major's fear that it's possible to develop a ghost without a human brain. Up until this point, the Major could fall back on the idea that she was human because of her ghost. After all, how could she have a ghost if she didn't have a brain? But the appearance of the Puppet Master, a completely mechanical being with a ghost, sends her spiraling deeper into her dilemma. What if she doesn't have a human brain at all? What if the real her died a long time ago? What if she never really existed? The Puppet Master initially seems to have a similar philosophy to the French physician and philosopher Julien Afray de la Maitrie, a predecessor of Alan Turing. Maitrie believed that there was no real difference between humans and machines, that they were one and the same. He imagined it like this. If I were to lose my arm and replace it with a mechanical one, I'd still be me, wouldn't I? What about my legs, my torso? You're probably thinking that everything but my brain is replaceable, but is that really true? After all, if you could replace my brain with one that functioned the same way, wouldn't I still be the same? Wouldn't I still be me? In his first monologue, the Puppet Master seems to agree with Metri's belief that humans are machines, just ones made out of organic material instead of metal ones. Later though, during his conversation with a Major, he tells her that he is missing something vital. He believes himself to be a mere copy, a reflection of a real human, since he was born in the sea of information, and lacks the ability to reproduce or die. And this is exactly what contemporary Australian philosopher David Chalmers believes. Chalmers frequently uses the analogy of zombies to explain this view. Not Hollywood zombies, the kind that eat human flesh, but philosophical zombies. Zombies physiologically indistinguishable from normal people. Though they may seem like humans and are capable of convincing others of their humanity, Chalmers believes that that doesn't matter, since zombies are lacking something. In Chalmers' case, lacking consciousness, and in the Puppet Master's case, lacking death. You should really check out David Chalmers' TED Talk on the matter, it's pretty awesome. So what does this all mean for our protagonist? How are the Major's views on humanity changed? The Major starts the film with a rather clear-cut philosophy. As we mentioned before, she believes that she is human because of her ghost, that ghost being a byproduct of the human brain cells in her cyber brain. And this belief is known as monism. Monists, like Spinoza and Leibniz, believe that the mind, or ghost, and the physical brain are one in the same. The Major believes she is human because she possesses this, and when she begins to doubt her own humanity, she can fall back on her modest views as a crutch, and her modest views are questioned a lot during the movie. During the diving scene, she and Bato are conversing when suddenly she speaks without any knowledge or control over it, since the voice came from outside of her. Does that mean her ghost was speaking? Is this part of the major separate? Her modest views are completely blown out of the water, though, after her first encounter with a puppet master. 
As we mentioned above, the Puppet Master is the embodiment of her worst fear. Being able to develop a ghost without a human brain, the Puppet Master is symbolic of what the major fear she is. Whereas before, she didn't think someone could have a mind or ghost outside of the brain, the Puppet Master shows it's possible, introducing the concept of dualism. Plato was the first philosopher to propose dualism, the theory that the mind or self resides separately from the physical brain, and since then many other philosophers have followed his lead. Aristotle furthered this theory by proposing a hierarchical arrangement based off of the functions of living things. For example, both animals and people share a prospective soul of pleasure, pain, and desire, whereas the faculty of reason is unique to people only. If this is possible, the Major has no proof of her humanity, and this is why she insists on diving into the Puppet Master. She has to know for sure what is inside of him, if anything. What resides in his brain, be it organic or mechanical, will finally decide her long debate over what humanity is. We see in the climax of the film how much Motoko's views have changed over the course of the story. She nearly rips her body apart as she struggles to open the tank, something she probably wouldn't have done earlier in the movie. After all, in the beginning she believed her mind and body to be one of the same, so why would she injure it? But now, through the events of the story and the words of the characters, she believes differently. The Puppet Master taught her that her ghost is not the same as her body, leading her to allow it to be destroyed and the film to embrace this dualistic philosophy. As for what happens to the Major after this and whether she keeps her dualistic views, we don't know. After all, the net is vast and infinite. So what do you think humanity is? What makes a being human? Does your ghost or self reside within your physical body? Let me know down in the comments and subscribe! I make new videos every week, two, two weeks-ish, something like that. Yeah. As always, if you want to learn more about the philosophy we talked about in this video, there are links in the doobly-doo to do so, and follow me on Twitter. Like, share, and all that jazz, and I'll see you guys next week. Goodbye.